Blizzard seems to have confirmed a leveling squish, leading to speculation that it okay. will come along with something altogether rather larger indeed. So, okay. today, there is a lot to talk about. Okay. That's hey everyone, good. welcome back to the news. And damn, this week has been really topical, with Blizzard issuing a survey that seemingly, well, teases an utterly massive change to the game. So that's pretty wild. Well, it doesn't and tease it, that, it well, assumes it. might be looking pretty darn likely. And we have a few other things to break down, including just where patch 8.2 could actually be. First, though, a big uh, shout out to our Patreon supporters. And um, yeah, we've just uh, got our next uh, lore video posted over there, over there in fact. And uh, yeah, of course, for the physical uh, tier this month we're shifting over There's to Pokemon Shannon, so cards oh boy guys, final sticker 25 bucks the shipping I hope included. I get Pikachu and, uh, with YouTube uh, maybe having other demonetization wave and all that stuff uh, yeah it's Ooh, really, really another demonetization topic. wave that's great pretty soon the only thing you're gonna be able to watch on YouTube is cat videos but then PETA will get upset and say that cat videos are unfairly monopolizing a cat's time and since a cat can't consent to be on camera that you're not able to do cat videos anymore and of course the advertisers because they're so fucking stupid are going to agree with that and uh they'll take their ads off youtube so that's just what's going to happen i mean the thing is that like whenever you think of the dumbest thing possible and that's probably what's going to happen thank you to them and let's get into this blizzard survey so this rather wild blizzard survey it appears to have been rather limited because not all questions made it onto the internet, but okay. those that have, have actually been very impactful indeed, as we both see Blizzard confirm a leveling squish and also talk about the pricing of the level 120 boost. So here's how the question this survey this is the pay attention to the survey question no it's not because i know what you're saying right is that you have certain questions on surveys that it's like did you know that dragons are actually gorillas and king kong happened last year and you know the people that put out king kong in the 1950s were actually time travelers and they recorded it last year so they could put it out you know in 1950 you know there are certain questions like that it's like yeah okay obviously that's gonna you know basically confuse people and like if somebody clicks yes on that you just disregard the whole survey but i don't think this is the case because this is something blizzard has been talking about a lot and it's not a completely off the wall question wait what are the okay so let me explain guys all right well shut the just shut the fuck up and listen so whenever you're doing a survey or you're doing any sort of like feedback thing it's helpful to have questions that are so fucking easy that if the person gets them wrong or clicks an answer that doesn't really make sense, it becomes evident that the entire rest of the survey is void because Blizzard have talked about the idea. Game Directory and his right. hostess said that they were very much floating the idea internally, but that they were undecided. So hearing that this is going to be coming to the game, well, that is quite a surprise indeed. And I did make a video earlier that was fairly anti-level squish, but the core point of that video is worth re-clarifying because I think a lot of people did um, hop out of that video pretty early. So that my point was that decreasing the number of levels doesn't really solve the core progression problems of the game that much. No. Uh, right, like, so if you have the game's total number of experience and hours be the same, but you have the number of levels, with each level being twice as long, you're essentially left with the same thing you're just changing the Oh, well, you know, it would be taking longer to level, right? That, that's all they would do. 
The only difference being that a higher percentage of your dings come with a new ability or a talent point, which certainly yeah. is a good thing, but overall, I don't think it's massively transformative. If they are to do leveling squish, then... up and there were different diff uh i don't know what you call them like flow charts i guess like flow charts that you could go down and you could click different abilities and then that would allow you to basically create your character stats and abilities as you level up and that way it would feel like maybe not only would you be getting you know your level up and the extra strength and agility and being able to do higher level quests but you'd also be able to put your points in this uh talent flow chart or something like that and you'd be able to level up and get those points maybe every level or every other level that would be fucking amazing I, I don't know why they haven't done that before it's a great idea pretty cheap now in my previous video i did float some ideas for talent revamps including one that would work alongside the game's current style of talent yeah bring out the well old one again one that was a separate Simple. class based progression system that would be far less about throughput and far more about like ability uh, you know utility and interesting things something okay. similar to the mastery system of guild wars 2 indeed something that blizzard could easily expand into end game and then also use to reinforce class fantasy okay. it's pretty simple though if eastern kingdoms and kalimdor are just level 1 to 30 outland and northrend or maybe 30 to 35, uh, Kata and Mop are 35 to 40, Wads maybe 40 to 50, Legions 50 to 60, and BFA 60 to 70. Well, makes sense. I mean, I just don't think it would change that much, right? The next expansion no. would just boop you up to level 80 anyway, and you still have the cut down number of talents. I think uh, what matters more here is the design changes that could come with the level squish. So I think that they've already laid good foundations. I think the 7.3.5 combat rebalance and scaling Empire, as seems to be Nazoth's plan, well, what if that would result in another reshuffle of the world? Almost True. like a small version of the Cataclysm revamp. True! Or something even like the Cataclysm revamp. I mean, oh, being no. real, the World of Warcraft team, the development team, is far, far, far larger than it was during Cataclysm development. And oh, no. when you look at Najatar, you do see a lot of asset reuse from Azuna and things like that, so perhaps they have a lot of their art resources shifted over to something big for the next expansion. Yeah, perhaps we'll see that about that. greatly redefine how leveling works in the world of Warcraft. I Sometimes I think that if an expansion doesn't go well in the first half, Blizzard's like, hey, yeah. look, everybody's just start working on the second one, okay? We'll, uh, we'll just call this one a wash. I think that's what happened in WAD, is the first half of it didn't really go too well, and they're like, hey, you know what? Let's just put everybody on Legion and say fuck it. I, I genuinely think that's what happened. It's like, you know that picture with like the uh, all the different WoW expansions? And uh, with the Eki Homo one thing, and then it showed the Wad one, and it was just a fucking Microsoft Paint drawing of an orc, and it said, might finish later if we have the resources. That's basically what I think they're going to do with BFA, is that everybody, they realize that BFA is just, people like, even if they make BFA better, even if they do everything that people want, BFA is an amazing expansion, nobody's going to come back because they just assume that it sucks. And that's the problem. that for many people, the quest content that comes with an expansion is just blasted through as a chore. What if there was more stuff framed like Suramar being an opt-in endgame narrative activity? Well, you know, maybe Bar having to do Suramar to unlock the dungeons, but you get my point. So essentially okay. a new expansion giving you zones to explore with their own uh, rewards and stories and maybe giving you some sort of infinitely filling XP bar that maybe gives you mastery points like the Guild Wars system. Or like the Diablo system. Or like the artifact weapon system. Like, WoW doesn't need infinitely filling systems that allow you to play the game constantly for incremental power gains that are next to invisible. 
Like, I let's just uh, just stop. Like, one of the good things about WoW is if you did the raids and you did these things, you were basically done for the week. Like, I, I don't like the idea that there should be infinite content and infinite character progression. I like the idea that there is a point where you fucking get all of the gear and you have that gear and you get to enjoy that. You get to sit in the city and people get to click on you. They're standing next to you. You give them the rhetorical click. That's whenever you click on them, but you already knew that they were inspecting you. Just let people get the gear. That's all there is to it. Let them get the gear. I mean, it's kind of hard to know what would work best overall. That type of design is extremely hard for them to do based on the amount of external class mechanics that the game has. A new set of 10 levels for Blizzard essentially means that, you know, you lose your artifacts and then you've got a power reset for the next expansion. And that's kind of... That's kind of core to how Power they do reset. expansion yeah. to expansion transitions. As controversial as the loss of the artifacts and um, the gameplay impact of that ended up being, I'm not sure if Blizzard would feel comfortable going fully into the other direction. I mean, Guild Wars 2 is by no means a perfect game, and as much as no, I do sit not. here and say that it sometimes has good ideas, I don't play it, and that probably does tell you something. <laughs> so, what I'd like to yeah. know is, what do you think a leveling revamp in World of Warcraft should do? What should it look like? And more importantly, what changes would you like to see go along with it? What do you think would result in a better leveling system that would just, you know, be better for the game, better for the... Just add in a talent train, make you have to go to trainers again. Like, make it make it uh, an RPG. You know, like the other the half of the game, right? I mean, you've already taken out the MMO with sharding. We don't have the RPG anymore. So what is it? World of Warcraft is a, a what? You, you, you know what I mean? Is it, what, what is it? I mean, let's be real. Like, yes, obviously that's what they need to add. Just bring back the talent trees. There is no reason. for different players at max level are great they're good because they're actually uh, they they're dynamic in a lot of ways you change your talents per fight you change your talents for what you want to do that's exactly what talents are there for and the fact is that if you look at the previous expansions right like vanilla burning crusade wrath cataclysm everybody basically had the same exact talent tree there was never any sort of a big change that you would make. The talent trees that they have now are very good. The only problem is that you only get them every 15 levels. And even then, it doesn't really make a big difference. Like, it, it only matters in max level in-game content. Wait, true? Wait, 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 they're exactly the same? They're not exactly the same. No one cares about changing every fight? Yes, they do. Uh, people do care about changing every fight. Uh, people want to be able it's just like how do you know that people care about changing every fight because in vanilla wow people would change their gear every fight if you had a helmet that would give you more of this or you had a trinket that would give you more of that like an aoe trinket you would put that on whenever you do an aoe fight if you had something else you know you would always do this like you would always change your gear like what do you mean of course that's spam that New it's a point experience, where all that stuff now the surveys also did mention some other things there were questions regarding people's glyphs? preferences yeah. of classic beta versus yeah, live exactly. in terms of their viewing habits what content they yep. wanted to watch such as you know streamers playing classic or live arena mdi live raids things like that hey, as well as me. a question covering which streamers people actually liked blizzard of course for a long time have been very stream focused Death well i'm not even on the fucking list Look at this. They didn't even put me on the fucking list.
definitely they're a lot more into streaming than they are into YouTube, and I think that's mostly I'm down being to the shadow ratio, banned uh, of um, essentially viewers to engagement that you get on Twitch. Uh, one question that did catch my interest a lot though was the Black level boost. Yeah. So they asked feedback on whether a forty dollar boost that saved one hundred and twenty hours would be worth it. That's interesting, as it would be twenty dollars cheaper. Why I think that? It's because it is. It is something that ruins the game. It just completely ruins the game. Imagine you go in, like, all right, if you've never played a priest before and you get sat down in front of a priest and they say, okay, here you go, the ability, like, you, the, the thing with leveling is it teaches you your abilities one at a time. If you get the boost, you have to learn all of that shit all at the same time. There's too much stuff for you to learn at the same time. just boost up a character and then they don't know what the hell to do with it for one they feel like they've wasted their chance at the boost because they only had one of them and on top of that they don't know how the fuck to play the character so they feel like they've probably wasted their time they're not happy with their class because they don't know how to play it so they can't understand what they need to do to be happy with the class they feel some sort of some sort of i don't know cognitive dissonance and they probably quit the fucking game like it's it's the literally worst idea that you can possibly have and Blizzard, all they need to do, number one, is get rid of the fucking boost. That's what I think they should do. And if they're not going to get rid of the fucking boost, what they should do is make it to where whenever you buy the game, you have to level up a character all on your own to 120, and then after you get 120 on a character that you level up on your fucking own, then you get the boost to level up a second character for a class that you might have leveled with and thought, wow, I'd really like to try that one too. So you finally get to actually level up a character on your own, understand how the game works, and then you can use the boost after that. That's all you need to do. That's problem solved. Like, uh, they just, or they could just get rid of it, right? Which would be the ideal situation. You just get rid of the boost and you say, hey, we're getting rid of this in three months. If you have the boost now, you get to keep it. But if you don't have it, you can't buy another one, right? That's all there is to it. Again, and they would make, the, they'd make, probably make more money because people buy the boost and then let's, or they get the boost with the game and then they only play the game for a month. Because they quit, because they're like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Leveling would keep them engaged longer and they'd get more money from sub fees. This increases the number of hours saved per dollar spent, just Does like how sense? raising the time to level also increases. Yeah. I do think that those changes made the game better, but as the survey question shows you, it does sort of alter the level boost value proposition to be a little bit more attractive. Do How convenient. Uh, the level score should reduce to level is access to the most current in-game content. The new level cap will be dramatically lower than the level cap of 120. How much would you like a total reduction in character levels? Yeah, I don't... Okay. I just want to read Ian that. get orders to elongate leveling by 20% to sell more boosts? I mean, he could, but very likely not, in my opinion, which is seemingly why this question is being targeted at price point, which is the other tuning knob of that sort of value equation that they can tweak. Changing it to $40 would mean that sales would have to increase by about 33% in order for them to make the same amount of money, but the thing is, because they would just be shifting more product that way, they would be making the same amount of money by burning through the potential market faster, uh, by which I mean people who 
who want to boost characters will have boosted their characters with the discount, reducing the size of the, you know, potential boost market. Now, Blizzard probably has the numbers to know that that will not happen, and what they're trying to do is work out, will that 33% price cut actually lead to 33% more sales? And obviously, they want a lot more than just the 33% boost. Of course, this does make a lot of sense in the broader context of Blizzard needing to get as much revenue in as they can. It has been an extremely quiet time. I think they should probably factor into that how long people stay subscribed. Because I don't know about you guys, but I feel like people are more likely to stay subscribed while they're leveling than whenever they're at max level. Because the game doesn't teach you what you need to do at max level, and because all the content is basically flat and you can just complete all of it very fast, there's nothing for you to actually work towards, right? As like a, as an in-game player, the reason why people, whenever they got the 60, 70, 80, or 90, or whatever you want to call it, whenever the, the reason why they felt like, oh my god, this is great, I'm finally at this level, is because they spent all the time before then preparing and thinking about what they were going to do whenever... They do that they get to the max level and they don't know what to do and there's much it's much easier to keep players engaged whenever you have a very very direct goal for them to achieve right get level 34 get level 35 get level 36 it, it's very simple right so those people are going to stay subscribed in my opinion probably longer and i don't have any math for this right but what i do have is literally thousands of people telling me what their feelings are all the time i've run a wow channel While WoW tokens are in the game, when I came back to BFA after barely quitting in Wrath, I paid for my sub and boost with the gold. Yeah, I don't know about the WoW token thing, man. I think that's also, uh, like, I don't think WoW tokens are as bad as people think they are because people would buy gold anyway. And this was, like, super common on my server. Everybody bought gold. And um, it, was just, it was just a system like that. And Blizzard is a certain point, like, it's like if you can't beat them, join them. And there's so much gold selling and everything like that that there would be no way to prevent that from happening. Uh, tokens or cancer tokens are not good for the game i didn't say tokens are good for the game but i do think that tokens are probably a lesser of two evils for them world of warcraft won't have another release for a year over a year and then at the same time overwatch 2 pve and diablo 4 while they almost certainly will be announced at blizzcon they're probably still a year or two off so it is definitely a sort of quiet time for the company. Now, speaking of a buttload of money, it's time to break out the fursuits because we are talking about the Volpera. They may have sort of been accidentally leaked again. This is pointed out by Wowhead. And if true, well, it's, I mean, it wouldn't be as bad as Battle for Azeroth being leaked via an armor model literally being the 7.3 PTR, but it would be, you know, quite the spicy little leak. So what happened? Well, a cinematic config file that was um, listing playable race IDs happened to include Volpera. And yes, it was there, it was in the file, and it was down as an allied race, but it is worth taking this in context. It's just a variable in a file, right? It's, you know, just because it exists doesn't actually mean that it's being used, and it could have just... <sighs> They're gonna do it. They're, they're, they're gonna do it. Like, let's be real, they're gonna fucking do it. I mean... This is, I, 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 I can't believe it, man. I, I, this is Blizzard's, listen, Blizzard has had a hidden furry agenda in WoW for a long time. This is exactly what we've been waiting to see. It's, I, I, I can't fucking believe it, man. I, I'm just, I, I, I don't know, like, why, like, imagine this. Imagine being at a meeting at Blizzard and someone suggesting that you add furries, like these little fucking sex foxes, instead of ogres into the game. Why would you not have a fucking ogre? Like, they're amazing. And I, I, I like, uh, th th this is basically what it is. They're literally, it's like, they're doing one, not that I'm,
has been an internal joke or a mistake. It, it is by a no joke. It's a hard co uh, confirmation that Volpera are coming to the game, though it kind of does suggest it because it does also come after a Volpera Brewfest icon was found, so it's hardly in isolation as a data point for us to, uh, to look at. As for why I mentioned money, well, I mean, that was just me being a bit pithy, but Blizzard obviously do make a lot of money from race transfers, which gives them a very strong incentive to keep on adding allied races to the game. Indeed, Blizzard's additional game transactions really seem to have picked up the slack as of late, with World of Warcraft being one of Activision Blizzard's best performers. I mean, Liz PR, they actually did tell me once that they wished that I referred to the game's health as not just being measured in subscribers, obviously meaning that it's measured in revenue, which is why the... Well, yeah. Well, doesn't that kind of explain it? Yeah. It's not about the game's health. This has nothing to do with the amount of revenue that the game is making. It doesn't make the game healthy. It makes it profitable. Being healthy and profitable are two separate things. Uh, of, of course, yeah, you would want... Well, wow. Wouldn't you want the person that's putting out news to your about your game to refer to it in a more positive light by reframing different adjectives of describing the game as something that they're not yeah of course you would want that but you know some of us still live in reality here and we know that there's a big difference between profitability and health other optional mtx is a lot more important to them and i kind of told them like oh yeah i mean we all know that but uh, it doesn't exactly look good for you does it uh, so that was a bit funny but true it is the case a race Good. transfer, 25 bucks. That's two and a half months of subscription. And it's also the type of thing that is targeting the same type of audience who are already highly engaged in the optional purchases through things like the store mounts. So it very much is a highly effective way to more deeply monetize the cosmetics driven audience of World of Warcraft. After all, yeah, you could appeal to the mechanically focused gamers who are going to criticize you to the cows come home, or you could just double down on catering to the people who have proven to have a very high conversion rate in the past. I think from- I think that's what they're doing. Like this is, listen. I think what's happened is Blizzard has intentionally pushed away the more hardcore and invested players for, instead of them, to have really, really dumb people that will buy microtransactions and store mounts, okay? So that's basically what I, I, I think this has been a conscious fucking effort. All right, like, cause how, like, it's like they just keep pushing away the hardcore smart people and they keep bringing in the people that are like, th these fucking morons that you see on Twitter and stuff. Whenever Blizzard announces a new pet, they're like, oh my God, oh my God, I need to pay my medical bills, but he's so cute. I'm going to buy him. I'm going to buy one for me and my friend. It's going to be so good, you know, and that's what it is, isn't it? I mean, give me a fucking break, dude. Like, it, it's so sad. And you see these fucking weak-minded, pathetic morons on Twitter and Facebook and stuff, and you get to look at them, and they're exactly what you'd expect to see. It, it, it's so fucking sad. I, I don't even know what to say about it, man. Like, I think Blizzard genuinely has done this on purpose. Twitter needs to fucking die? There's nothing, Twitter is great, okay? Now, obviously, there's a lot of stupid shit that happens on Twitter. But for the most part, I like Twitter a lot. Like, I mean, all right. Do you want to hear about your grandmother's fucking political opinions? I mean, at least on Twitter, you get to hear about some dumb fucking kid that you don't know's political opinions. And that's fine, because you just assume they're an idiot and they're too young to vote anyway, so it doesn't affect you. But whenever grandma's doing it, you know she's going to bring that shit up the next time you see her. You know? I mean, come on. From the, you know, working out the arithmetic over at Blizz, they're probably going to do the latter. It's all very interesting, though, to talk about. I think business is just generally interesting, and uh, I suppose just the examination of incentives. Now, Volpera were the only new allied race in this file, so it does make me wonder, would they be added as a neutral allied race rather than... But, you know, mentioning the Ann Cohen, let's just talk about where Patch 8.2 actually is. So, this is something that Taliesin put in question in the weekly reset last week.
the timelines of patch 8.2, because that patch certainly has been in the oven for quite some time indeed. Now, I did a video on this a good while ago, plotting out the relative uh, patch to patch times for every patch since Legion, as well as speculative dates for 8.2. Dates that seem to pretty much be on the mark, as it turns out. So, Legion patches were, for the bulk of that expansion's life, spaced 80 or 68 uh, days apart. Well, with BFA, oh, 77. things have been really quite different. So, back in that video, I said this. From Legion launch to patch 7.2 was 210 days. From Legion launch to 7.3 was 365 days. Assuming a 25th of June release date, BFA launch to patch 8.2 launch would be 310 days. So that means that relatively speaking, patch 8.2 is closer to patch 7.3 in terms of its relative timing from the expansion launch, which kind of does show you that Blizzard are they are decently behind schedule when it comes to patch 8.2. Good. So that's what I said in that video. I always feel better whenever they're behind schedule. Like, I, that, because I, I'm like, okay, they're going to wait and make sure that it's actually good. You, you know what I mean? And, and yeah, I do think also they're delaying this shit to make sure it doesn't come out at the same time as classic. I, I, I totally fucking think that's happening. I mean, it would be stupid even if they didn't think classic was going to do like really, really well. Uh, it would be stupid for them not to do that. It would be smarter for them to wait and, you know, release one product and let all the hype build up for that one product and then let that go down and then do another one, right? Rather than do everything all at the same time. It's the reason why, like, YouTubers, you know, they can record four videos in a day, but they put one out every single day because that's basically the same rhythm that people want to approach content. And once you have different things that are coming out at the same time, you start competing for people's attention. And whenever you're having two products that are from the same people competing for attention from each other, you're basically cannibalizing your marketing strategy. And obviously that's not a good idea for them to do. Like, let's be real. And I suppose the question is, will it actually be the 25th of June? Is that when we can expect it? Well, I think that's totally possible with it coming down to this. How much do Blizz want to compete with Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers? Do they want to launch to compete with its early access or what? its launch? Because early access is June 28th, so launching 8-2 the preceding Tuesday What's that? would compete with the early access. Alternatively, the 2nd of July is a Tuesday, so they could coincide the patch release date with Shadowbringers expansion release date. Now, Blizzard developers over time have said that they don't do this. Yeah, it's they like, do. Lads, I've got a calendar. Heaven's Wards, uh, that released on the 23rd of June 2015, the same day Blizz released patch 6.2. Stormblood released on the 20th of June. Blizzard released the Tomb of Sargeras on the 20th of June. And then in the past, they matched the release date of Wildstar and Guild Wars 2 with major in-game events. So regardless of what Blizzard say, it is actually what they do. So expect to see 8.2 launch, I'd say, yep. on the 2nd of July or the 25th of June. Then, and I guess yep. I'll be getting on to what uh, Tally was talking about, with Classic doing so well on Twitch and a lot of engagement there for World of Warcraft, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't feel the pressure to rush it out. After all, their internal QA department, from what I heard, was really slain by the layoff wave earlier on this year. We can tell. Back up to speed yet. Regardless, it clearly has not been good for the health of BFA for the live game. I mean, from my own personal experience, knowing that 8.2 is coming, well, and I just knew that like from the PTR that 8.2 is way better than 8.1 and what came before. It's funny that they do this all the time because they made this mistake at the end of Vanilla is they brought out Nax and then nobody did Nax because it took so much time to do. They'd just rather wait for BC because BC was effectively a gear reset. The only problem now is instead of repeating that mistake once 13 or 15 years ago, they repeat that mistake every four months. It's like they literally make the same mistake. It's like Groundhog Day. Except that, like, except you do something stupid every day. Yeah, just imagine that. You wake up in the morning, you do the same dumb fucking shit. Like, imagine, like, it's like Groundhog Day, and Bill Murray spills his coffee on his shoes every single time. And he knows he's gonna do it, and he does it anyway. Oh, shit! Goes to bed. Oh, shit, I did it again. Oh, shit, spills it every single time. Or he steps in the puddle. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah, exactly, dude. It, it's just...
8 2 is clearly superior in just about every way and yep. will replace my character's Hopefully. current progress. So there's no point in me playing the game until 8 2 comes out and I can do Mechagon and Azutar, which I actually do want to do. Exciting. So, yeah, there you go. It certainly is an interesting time for World of Warcraft with Classic, with 8 2 finally being on the horizon. And I suppose for me, the main question is given how long we had to wait for 8 2, will we see 8 3 along the regular timescale or, or will it all? Um, here, here's basically, here's the way I look at it, right? Let me see here. So subscribe? Well, everybody's still subscribed. But listen, like, we're fucking addicted to the game. Like, we're always gonna play the game, and people get mad at uh, all, the, all they want, but that's the truth. We're all, we're all gonna just keep playing the game, and there's nothing that we can do about it. Uh, it is what it is. And, yeah, I mean, that's the fucking truth, boys. I'm sorry to say. Like the video? Yeah, we'll look at the comments just real quick before we, uh, we do AV in a minute, okay? I'm not sub till classic. Yeah, here before Withered Gem reacts to this on his stream. Okay. Bald Withered Gem. A Withered Gem with red hair. That's a red one. He's not going to be impressed seeing that. Free content. Who's that? Asmongold. He lives in a cave in the Forgotten Islands of the Broken Isles, and he has a very successful stream on Twitch. There are those who call him Asmon Bald. Okay, that's great. So, all of the comments, like, this is this one has 300 likes. All of the on-topic comments have less than 50. This is insane. Like, I, I don't even know what to say about it. Okay, let's see. Squishing levels on matching things. Honestly, expect a Cataclysm 2.0 for a year now. I hope they don't do that. Leveling squishing is bound to happen. It'll be interesting how they do it. That's true. It's your boy Asmon Mold. Okay, that's fucking amazing. I'm so happy about that. We really need the old talent system. Decrease effort put into the stream. Yes, be, uh, you're, you're right. Because it's very, very hard for me to do Alterac Valley. Like, that's very, very hard. Like, it's actually so much easier for me to just watch a video because I have to move my hands around an Alterac Valley. Yes, it's, it's, it's truly difficult for me to do that. Like, that, that's maximum effort. Like, whenever I'm in Alterac Valley, I'm putting in 100% effort to stream, man. I'm going hard. Okay, tell us, Asmongold, what do you think you talked about in the video? Like, uh, here's the way that I... Tell us, Asmongold, what do you think you... Okay, dude. Okay, I see. Uh, shave your head. No, I, I know, I know, I know. Uh, it's true though, you're just small. Yeah, you have to actually talk when reacting. Well, yeah, I usually, I, half of the reacting videos are me talking about the video. Like, I mean, it's not even like the video even... Basically, the plan. Um, I, I don't think that's. I mean, that's really all there is to it. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I. I th that's their goal is is to make money. Let me read some of these real quick, okay? Has been uh, starting well in October, even during mythic raids and BFA. This game feels dead. I think retail has a way to go before it can recreate the wonder that everyone talks about with classic. Watching the stream is be so hyped for classic. B Holtzman, thank you very much for the five uh, five dollars. I appreciate that, man. Pogus Champus with the ten dollars. Thank you very much. Being able to constantly switch talents, I believe, is something that made WoW less exciting over time. It's a major contributor to losing your class and spec identity and immersion. Games like PoE and Classic make it hard to respect for a reason. It does, and I think there's obviously a trade-off. There are certain positives for each one, and I think that there should be a little bit of both in WoW. And I think obviously they tried to emulate that with the Azerite traits, but it was a big mistake. Uh, hello, peasant. It's been all good life with you. I had a friend playing WoW. I'm watching my family fall out one by one. One day you'll be bald and old. Can't wait to see you then. So long, sucker. Thanks very much, Asmund Gold Hair, for the ten dollars. Really appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. Okay, let me go all the way up to the top here. Uh, I don't know if my alerts are working or not. I'm pretty sure they're like fucked up, and I have no idea why. I mean, if it was, listen, if my stream went off with like out any technical difficulties, it would just not really. It would, would it really be my stream? I, I would say probably not. Uh, okay, my camera. Yeah, still have here too. Okay, so check the in-game messages. Wait, what is this here? In-game messages? Uh, I mean, I'm getting a lot of messages from people all the time. Uh, we'll start out. Uh, we'll do the first AV in just a minute here, okay, guys? Uh, but yeah, anyway, so here's basically what I think about the video. I think this is obvious.
Uh, they've always done that? Of course, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, haircut stream before Classic? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I do, I do like the video, though. I think, obviously, he hit on a lot of, like, big points, and his criticism with the leveling squish and everything, uh, I think, was very valid. Uh, so I, I totally am glad about that. Um, you're probably being throttled because of your political beliefs. Yeah, that's right. That, that must be it. At least your hair looks good today. Yeah, I know. It, it, this is like about every once a month that it does happen, and it doesn't really look that bad.